got small print. I left my Bible at home, everybody. <laughs> so I must read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Joy of the Lord is my strength. Thank you. Good morning. Amen. Good, morning. Amen. Good morning. It's that time to bring all our cares, all our frustrations, all our questions. It's time to bring all our trials, our issues. It's time to bring all that to the altar. And when you bring it to the altar, leave it at the altar. You don't need to take any of it back. We got enough problems. Dealing with today. We ain't got to worry Amen. about dragging yesterday's drunk or worry about what tomorrow's going to bring because tomorrow's not here yet. Amen. Right. Amen. So let's, let's clear our hearts, clear our minds. Gracious Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we come to you as humbly as we know how, acknowledging you as the sovereign God of the universe, the great I am, the yes. beginning, the end, the first, and the last, Alpha and Omega, the sovereign God, perfect in all attributes of heavenly father we praise you we give you glory we give you honor we we just we, we just respect who you are oh heavenly father yes heavenly father we come to you asking you to forgive us of our sins yes. forgive us of anything any up here thought anything we did anything that we done that we should not have done and what and for not doing what we should have done oh heavenly father Heavenly Father, we ask you just to create in us a clean heart, yes. create in us a softer heart, yes. create in us a forgiving heart, creating us a tender heart, O oh Heavenly Father, so we can allow people to see you in us, O oh Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for not only the material blessings that you've given us, but we thank you for <laughs> breath of life. Yes. We thank you for life. We thank you for stopping by this morning and allowing us to wake up and not calling us home. Amen. Although we may prefer to be home with you, we thank you for giving us another chance to do your will down here, O oh Heavenly Father. Thank you for the movement of our limbs, O oh Heavenly Father, despite the pops and the, the pops and the aches and the pains. We thank you. Either way, we can still move, O oh Heavenly Father. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the clothes on our backs. We thank you for the financial blessings that you've given us, oh Heavenly Father. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the people that are here. We thank you for the people who wanted to be here but could not, oh Heavenly Father. We ask you to watch over the people that are traveling, oh Heavenly Father. Give them traveling grace to their destination and let them arrive back home safely, oh Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking you to use us as you see fit. We know, you know the need, you know our needs, oh Heavenly Father. Some of our needs are financial. Some of our needs are material. A lot of our needs are spiritual, Heavenly Father. We ask you to fulfill those needs. We ask you to bring unity in family, oh Heavenly Father. Bring unity in neighbors. Bring unity in country, oh Heavenly Father. Bring unity in this world, oh Heavenly Father. And bring unity to your people, our people, oh Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we're all related. 
Like we were taught, if we were to, if we were to get rid of our skin, we would all look alike. So, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bring unity to this world. We ask you to bring forgiveness, grace, and mercy to this world, oh, Heavenly Father. Bring unity, grace, and mercy to our families, oh, Heavenly Father. That's represented in the sound of our voice, oh, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, as you bring, as you, you work through the speaker today to bring the word to us. And let us retain that word and take that word out to wherever we may be, be it on our jobs, be it in our communities, be it with our family, be it wherever, Heavenly Father. Let your word flow through today and flow all through next week. Heavenly Father, we lift these requests in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we say amen. 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 Life and favor. Yeah. Yes. They're amazing. He's so amazing. Yes. Life and favor. I want God. Mm. I don't know about y'all this morning, but I'm just feeling the presence of the Lord. Amen. Life and favor. Because you know, it was, it was God's favor last night. It was His grace and His mercy that just rushed over us to make sure that we uh, were protected. Our homes were protected. Our loved ones were protected. It was mercy and grace this again this morning that woke us up, allowed us to just take another breath. Amen. You know, we just have so much to be grateful and so much to be thankful for. I, I, I think the world is really missing out. And I think that's why, you know, as we say, you know, everybody always talking about the world coming to an end. It, it, the world is not coming to an end, not just yet. Well, I mean, because nobody know when it's coming. When, you, when it comes, you know. Uh, we don't know when it's coming, so I'm I'm not gonna fall into that that trap and say uh, the world's coming to an end because I don't know when it's coming. But we are in chaos. Uh, we're in a chaotic state right now. Amen. Amen. But to God be the glory, because through it all, God is the one that's still in control. No matter what we have to face, no matter what we have to go through. It's just amazing to me how God is and the things that he does and how he continues to just watch over us and nurture us and, and show us so much love. And yet we still don't get it and can't love one another. I mean, I don't know why there's just so much hatred in the world right now today. And, you know, we have people that are in government offices as government officials. And right now all we're teaching is division. Uh, I seen a caption the other day where had the uh, guy over the railing had a Nazi flag and the other one had a Confederate flag and they say I'm American. And I'm trying to figure out how can you be an American and be a Nazi at the same time? You know, and, 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 and as far as the Confederacy, I mean, you know, half these people nowadays our age, and I, I said my age group and the, and the ones younger than us, what do they know about the Confederacy? Half of them don't even, they haven't even read, ever read the history of the Confederacy. So, when it's all said and done, man is going to destroy himself in the first place. We all do that anyway. So man is his own worst Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. October the 13th. Amen. Oh, man, it's, it's almost uh, Christmas. Wow. Next thing you know, we'll be talking about Thanksgiving and yeah, I'll be waiting on Good Friday. I mean, I'm sorry, Black Friday. Mm -hmm. Going out spending y'all your, all your hard-earned cash. Amen. So for y'all do, I just need, you know, just donations. And, and, you know, find me a TV on Black Friday. And y'all know how we do it all the way. It's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a good day so far. I mean, I've just been sitting here just enjoying the music and enjoying the worship. The Indians asked their chief in autumn if winter was going to be cold or not. Not really knowing an answer, the chief replied that the winter was going to be cold and that the members of the village were to collect wood to be prepared. Now, being a good leader, he then went to the next phone booth and called the National Weather Service. And he asked, is this winter going to be cold? And the man on the phone responded, this winter was going to be quite cold indeed. So the chief went back to speed up his people to collect even more wood to be prepared. And a week later, he called the National Weather Service again and said, is it going to be a very cold winter? Yes, the man said. It is going to be a very cold winter. 
So the chief goes back to his people again and he orders them to go and find every scrap of wood they can find. And two weeks later, he called the National Weather Service again. He said, are you absolutely sure that the winter is going to be very cold? Absolutely, the man replies, because the Indians are collecting wood like crazy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Say it like you mean it. This, this is my Bible. This is my God. The Word of God. My word for us. Amen. Amen. If you would turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 15. Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 15. Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 15. Amen. NIV, Matthew chapter 7, starting verse 15, and the word of God reads as thus. Now, these are the words of Jesus Christ himself. Watch out for false prophets. I'm going to add to that a little later, but I ain't going to change the word. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. You may be seated in the presence of God. Ow! You know y'all didn't hear that before. You know, yeah. Thought it was a wolf coming or something. Yeah. But this morning, well, I want to just 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 briefly want to talk about danger, danger, wolves in sight. Danger, danger, wolves in sight. Many people like to think that you cannot that you can trust religious leaders. And ministers know they rank high in, in polls concerning people you can trust. Not, not so today. Not, not everybody's trusting ministers like they used to. And people will often accept whatever a preacher, a priest, or a rabbi says as the truth. A lot of people do. They, they, whatever they say is gospel. Instead of reading what the word says for themselves. Yet Jesus told his disciples to beware of false prophets. And this morning, that may appear, so they may appear like sheep, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. 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 You know, wolves run in packs. And I wonder why, that's why, you know, a lot of them, they hang together. And run around together. Congregate together. Call themselves sister churches. Because wolves running packs. And you know, I was thinking about this, I was reading this, I said, Lord, I understand what you're saying about, you know, telling us to watch out for false prophets. But sometimes you just got to watch out for fake, I mean, uh, false people in general. We need to be able to identify them knowing what to look for. Or so let me ask you just, are you concerned about false prophets today? Anybody? We we should be. Because there's so there's so much there's so much uh falsifying going on today because no one is really giving and teaching the word of God as it is given to them, as it is written. The great diversity of teachings suggests that many are being misled. And I think, you know, today, so many people are being misled. 
They're being misled because you know why? Because nobody really paying attention to the word. They're being misled because they, they believe everything that this, this person has to say. That this person can't they can't tell them no wrong. So we need to be reminded of the danger and know how to spot any wolves that might come our way. <clears throat> With the words of our Lord and Savior in these verses that we just read from 15 through 20, and it's fresh on our minds, I want to wish to use this opportunity to remind us that we need to watch out for wolves, you all. Because they are among us. And let me be the first to reemphasize the point that there will be false prophets. I don't understand how people can be so sucked up and sucked into something that's not real. When the word of God tells you to watch out, watch out, and Jesus himself is telling you, watch out for false prophets. As Paul warned on several occasions, Paul told about telling the Ephesians elders, uh, and he tell them to take heed for even among themselves would be would men arise. That's going on even today. Yeah. Even among themselves, men are going to rise and be ravenous wolves. They're going to mislead God's people because let me tell you right now, they're running in packs and we don't recognize it. We too busy shouting and 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 and, and bent. We let our emotions get in the way. I'm telling y'all it is important for people to read the word and pay attention to the word. We lose sight of what God is really trying to teach us because we're too busy just going to church, listening to somebody, taking it as gospel, and walking out the door. Yes. And we don't recognize the wolf because we're little wolves. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Oh my. They can't rec they they can't recognize the wolf because they part of the pack. <laughs> Amen, Pastor. Amen. You got you got congregations full of wolves, man. Yep. From the pulpit to the door. Amen. <laughs> and nobody can recognize what's really going on or, or the false prophecy because you 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 part of it. We're talking about being aware of false prophets, but see, we can't be aware of the false prophets because we didn't fell into the trap. We've been caught. We're caught up in what's being said. We're caught up in what's being taught. We're caught up in man's covenant. We're caught up in man's doctrine. We're caught up. We're just caught up with man, period. When are people going to recognize and realize that you need to be caught up with Jesus Christ? I, we, they, they sing his songs every, I, let me say today, Sunday somewhere in this city they sing the song, can't nobody do me like Jesus <laughs> can't nobody do me like the Lord now I, I, I sit back and I, I listen to those words and I'm like I wonder if they realize, do they really wonder and realize what they're saying are they really comprehending what they're saying because if you comprehended what you're saying why are you following this man? <clears throat> now don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that you know they shouldn't they just shouldn't uh, 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 follow this person and, and believe in this person or trust this person, especially if this person is doing the right thing. If you're leading the flock as God has called you to lead the flock, praise the Lord. But if you're doing this all for your own good and for your own benefit. Well, Satan appears as an angel in the light, too. <laughs> Satan be right out there with you talking about, can't nobody <laughs> do me like Jesus. And we don't pay no attention to it. Just another wolf in the pack. Amen. Just another wolf in the pack. You know, there was a little TV show when we was kids called, uh, 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 what was it? Uh, Lost in Space. They had a little robot. Mm -hmm. And if Will Robinson was running around, and every time Will Robinson got some kind of trouble, the little robot said, danger, danger, Will Robinson, danger, danger. 
Jesus is already telling you, danger, danger. But ain't nobody paying attention to Jesus. Amen. Oh, amen. We'll pay attention to the little TV show. Right. <laughs> All right, now. But ain't nobody paying attention to reality when Jesus is telling us danger, danger. There is danger about us. Look around you each and every day. You know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of getting sick and tired of this whole thing with this flag and then President Trump. And then, you know, I, all I can do is just pray because it is really, I don't got to the point, I don't even, I don't even want to watch the NFL no more. I don't. I, it, 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 I don't even want to be bothered with it anymore. I was watching the game the other day, Thursday night, and I, 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 was, I started flipping channels. I know I watched it from beginning to end. I started flipping channels. Mm. President Goodell, uh, uh, NFL president, he said he don't know they're going to meet this week and they're going to talk about it. What is that to talk about? I, I, I think when it all boils down to me, this is what I'm looking at. This is just my. This is just me. I think right now I'm looking at the NFL and I, I'm, I'm listening to a lot of folks and, I'm, and I, I've been reading a lot of things. And I'm like, man, modern day slavery. We just get paid for it. Modern day. What did they used to do back in the day? Pit two bucks up against each other, did for entertainment. Beat the crap out of each other, right? Mm -hmm. What they doing in the NFL? <laughs> but they just get paid for it. Yeah. And see, I, I start thinking about that. I say, you know, we, 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 we look at these young men, and they say, man, were well, they millionaires. But see, you know what? Is anybody counting about, you know, by the time they get to be my age, half of them ain't going to be able to walk. <laughs> yeah. Half of them probably not going to be able to think straight, especially if they're getting concussions. Is, is the money really worth all that? And we sit here and we act like nothing is really happening around us. People are protesting. And they're, they're saying they shouldn't be protesting. I thought everybody had a right. It's just like, you know, in, in the Constitution where it tells you that, it says every American, in the Constitution it says every American has the right to vote. Why is it that black folks got to have some kind of some little piece over to the side saying we we giving y'all a right? I thought it said every American had the right to vote. And people losing their mind tomorrow, we got to read, we got to vote, make sure that we we still able to vote. Let me tell you something. You can't take my, my rights away. According to your according to your constitution. <laughs> I wasn't born a slave. I was born free. And I was born in America. So they tell me. Yeah, I'm but now you tell me that constitute that part of it don't apply to me. <laughs> we ain't just got ravenous wolves in church. They all around. Now the Lord has told you to watch out for false prophets. Watch out for false presidents. Watch out for false people. I, you know, it, it, it really bothers me, and it really, I'm just so sick of people. I, I really am, I'm just sick of people. Because nobody, let me put it this way. Have you ever, have you ever felt a way where you just, you know, you, you knew something was right, but you, you just wish everybody got what you had, or got it the way you had it, or, or, or understood? And you, you want everybody to have what you have? Or to feel the way you feel? But you see it, and, and you know, there's really nothing you can do about it. <laughs> That's our world today. That's our world today. Huh? And, and, and you know, he said, he said, do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? No, they do not. Because you're not going to get nothing from, you ain't going to get no grapes from no thorn bushes. And you're definitely not going to get no fig from thistles. And he said, likewise, every good tree bears good fruit. Every good tree. See, 
when you're teaching and preaching the word of God and giving the word of God the way God wants you to give it to his people, it's good fruit. And group fruit, good fruit will grow. But when it comes to that bad tree, ain't no good fruit coming out of that. I don't care how much money you got right now in 2017. You can be a multi-millionaire. Some of y'all can be billionaires. But you know what? Your fruit ain't no good. Bad fruit delivers and grows bad fruit. I don't care how you look at it. A bad fruit cannot grow good fruit. And I'm telling you, people of God need to start waking up. With so many warnings, this is not a subject to take lightly, you all. I'm telling y'all right now. It, it, there's so many warnings out here for us. Yet we take it lightly. But how can we spot wolves when they appear so disarming like sheep? Amen. Because a lot of wolves look just like you and I. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Thanks to Jesus and the word of God, you can identify them. But who's reading the word? Who's talking to Jesus? Uh, California number one, Brother Martin, there will be cross prophets because they're going to still be out there no matter where we go. Point number two, we can identify false prophets. All you got to do is look at the, uh, uh, examine them by the fruits of their lives. People are greedy. And when that fruit looks good, we want more of it. And we do anything to gain that good fruit. So we think it's good. False teachers and false prophets are often betrayed by their greediness. Amen. And, and we know it. It is it's, it's manifested by their by just look around, look at their lifestyles. People like to be flashy. Now, why do we have to push it down people's throats? How much we got? How good we're doing? How greedy we are? But see, won't nobody look at that in church today. They're, they're, you know, if I'm teaching, if I'm teaching and preaching this message somewhere, they're gonna be like, "Oh, he crazy." I'm my eye past ain't greedy. Yes, he is. Greedy, I don't know what. If he ain't greedy, why they worrying about how much money came in the church today? You just a pastor. You, why are you concerned with the cash? With the cash flow? What you worrying about the money for? <laughs> doesn't matter. When does it matter how much is put in church? Is it for you? Is it for you? Because last time I checked, it was God's storehouse, not yours. But see, man it is greedy. And we can we can we can, we can look at them by the by how about their immorality? This is why people don't trust pastors today. Don't nobody want to leave their kids around too many pastors nowadays. Amen. The ones you used to be able to trust. How about them priests? Definitely not them, huh? Amen. But how about them? For years. See, that, that just goes to show you that wolves come in all kinds of shapes, colors, and forms. Amen. It's just like Every black person ain't a good person. And every white person ain't really a bad person. But we so caught up with this, this racial thing that's going on today. 
Why, why is it in 2017 we start, we, we going back, we going backwards? <laughs> it's like this man trying to put us back in the 1934. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, we're going to be growing cotton in Missouri. Huh? I'm just saying. That's the, ment that's the mentality of people today around this country. Because you have a leader that's teaching and, and talking about these things, about divisiveness and being divided, but he's talking about it in a racial tone. So now, all of those races that have been undercover for so many years, oh, it's open season now. And the word that told you to watch out for false prophets. If he told me to watch out for him and I didn't recognize him, let me tell you something. I don't fear him. Because everything that he does is going to come back at him. Wouldn't you like to see one day that one, Donald Trump would just be broke? Even though that ain't, you know, that probably won't ever happen. I mean, the man that been, he been bankrupt. He, he didn't file bankrupts, I think, 25, 30 times. They ain't never been broke. The only person I know can be bankrupt and still build a, build a building, build a hotel. But filing bankrupts, tell me he broke. But we have allowed this chaos to go on. Some of them you can recognize by their lust for power. Man loves power. See, this is our greed. And especially when you start talking about people that want to build religious empires. They forget all about the word. They forget all about God. I'm trying, I got to build up this empire. Because right now, this is all about me. So, you got to look at it. Given time, the true character of many false prophets is going to be exposed by the fruits of their life. All you got to do is pay attention. Just like I tell people to pay attention to the word. Pay attention to the religious leaders. Pay attention to the world. Pay attention to the president. All you got to do is watch them. Pay attention to their fruits of their labor. They'll tell you who they are. And by examining the fruit of their teaching, take notice of their methods. They work secretly. What the president trying to do now? He's trying to change everything that, that uh, President Obama put out there. Ever since he got in office, everything that Obama did, he's trying to change. He said, we're going to get rid of Obamacare, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna bring in Trump care. <laughs> First and foremost, it wasn't President Obama that, that, that came up with the, the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> they just started calling it Obamacare because he was the, the, the president in office at the present time. It wasn't, it wasn't his proposal. It wasn't his act. Now Trump wants to call it Trump care. <laughs> Take notice of their methods, you all. Uh, even our even our even our religious leaders, their 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 ministries, especially finances. What I was talking about, will be shrouded in secrecy. A lot of money is not accounted for. <laughs> what? What you say, Pastor? A lot of money is not accounted for. When you when you when you when you in religious empires where thousands and thousands of dollars are being are coming in there on Sunday mornings, ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. We'll put ten over here to this over this way. How much are we coming in? We got twenty we're running twenty grand a day, and you know he he, he he gonna get a cut. Don't think don't, because he do. Rather than being open to one and all. Because nothing should ever be hidden from anybody when it comes to ministry. And especially with finances. <coughs> this is how so many of them get in trouble and don't know it. This is why the government now wants to tax all these religious empires. Because man has gotten so greedy, they've taken they just taken advantage of what we had. So they draw people with an appeal of what people often cover, such as health and wealth. 
prosperity preachers rather than preparing people for what Christians can expect. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't prepare them for what they can expect. We, we talk to them about health and wealth, the health of their wealth, and how to get wealthy. Everybody's not going to be rich. Everybody's not going to be wealthy. If they did, why would God tell us to take care of the poor? And so many of those that are in wealth fail to realize and see what the word says because they're never in the word. I applaud a lot of those brothers and sisters that have shared their wealth to those that are less fortunate. I applaud the people that are not wealthy that share to those that are less fortunate. Because you don't have to be rich to take care of the poor. Because there are so many people that are less fortunate than us in here in this room this morning. There are a lot of people less fortunate than us. And this is the this is what I'm saying. We don't always you know quit looking about the wealthy. Like 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 President said, <clears throat> Puerto Rico needs to start to take care of themselves. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to be helping one another. But I heard the mayor, I mean, uh, governor of Puerto Rico say today, you know, yesterday that uh, <clears throat> he'll have like these at least 95% of electricity back on by, by December. And I said, you know, that's, 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 that's just the goodness of man because there are a lot of people down there now that's giving them, that's giving them help outside of the government. Uh, our president tries to portray that everything is, is being done by the government, FEMA and all the uh, government agencies, and it's not. There are a lot of people down there helping Puerto Rico that has nothing to do with the federal government. Amen. And so he needs to stop that. But then again, false prophets. You got to take notice of their doctrine. <laughs> How they twist and pervert the scriptures. You know, man turns some scripture up. Yeah, turn it around and make it, it make it sound so good. You, 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 people just fall all over it. <laughs> Yet not one word of it was true. We got we got to be aware of those things. We got to take notice of those things. <clears throat> the teaching is often expressed in the terms of man and not scripture. True that. How they teach that what is clearly contrary to scriptures, even if they are able to perform signs and wonders. I haven't seen any leader that performs signs and wonders, except, I ain't going to go there. Y'all know who he is. <laughs> he think he can heal everybody. It's not necessary, to, it's just not necessary to judge the hearts of those who claim to speak for God. It's not because, first of all, that's not my job. And we need to only to be fruit inspectors, that's it. The fruit of their life and teaching will become apparent Soon enough, I'm telling you right now. This is how we can watch out for wolves, you all. Uh, of course, this presumes that our knowledge of God's word is sufficient because we have to read the word to know what to look for in the life of false prophets, false teaching, false leadership. We need we need stay in the word. God done already told you, danger, danger. It's upon you. It's upon you. I'm telling you to beware. But do not be afraid because I'm still in control. I'm still in control. So today, you know, are you equipped to identify a wolf in sheep's clothing if you saw one? I really hope you are. Because they are, they are there. They're there. They're out there. Some of them even in your circle. Oh, oops. Got to be aware. She do. Doesn't make you one. Just don't be part of the pack. One day at a time is all it takes. Reading the word. One day at a time. Getting strong in the word. Amen. 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 Emmanuel. Emmanuel.